Hello and welcome to my new video, and in case you're wondering what this video is about, it's the companion video for my new article, Installing OPN Sense in 5 Easy Steps. In order to install OPN Sense, there are five things that we must do. Uh, number one, find out if your hardware meets the minimum hardware re requirements. Number two, download OPN Sense. Number three, transfer the image file to the appropriate media for installation. Uh, number four, using the installation media, boot the target system and begin installation. And finally, number five, now that the installation is complete, remove the installation media and reboot. So we need to do all those things and hopefully we can achieve that in this video. So I thought that, that uh, what, we probably, what I should probably do for this video, um, I'm going to install OPN Sense onto a virtual machine. And first, I think we should do like a schematic of the uh the diagram of the, uh, of the network um we have uh the internet which is the outside world but then we have a uh, the opn sense router um which is everything is filtered into which is essentially the wan interface and then we have two interfaces we have a dmz um, which, uh, if we had a web server or an FTP server, we would put the DMZ into this network. And then there's the LAN, which is, uh, the network for basically just workstations. Um, so here I have, uh, the internet is the top level. OPN Sense routers is, uh, at close to, to the top levels, uh, down from the internet. And then at the bottom level, we have DMZ and LAN. And DMZ, uh, in case you, I think it's called the screen subnet now, um, used to be called Demilitarized Zone. So basically what it is, is it's a, it's a public facing network where you can access, uh, from the LAN you can access the, the DMZ, but you can't access the DMZ, you can't access the LAN from the DMZ. So that's why we have the arrow here, land to the DMZ, but we don't have any arrow pointing from the DMZ to the land. So that's basically what we're doing here. Um, so I thought we, I'm using Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, what version is this? This is a uh, 6.1, relatively new. Um, so I thought what we do here is that we need three networks. There's the uh, WAN network, the, the LAN network, and the DMZ. So, let's see, I, I, I do preferences and network. I'll, I'll do like the three different networks. We have uh, DM, the nat network, which is basically the LAN, the WAN network. Um, there's, actually, should I rename that? Probably should. WAN network. Um, rename from that network. Um, so I mean, you see, you can basically add networks here. You can also uh, delete networks. Um, let's see. Let me add another network here. Um, and what is this? this is LAN network uh, edit? Yes, this is a different network. So we could have a separate network here for, uh, say, developers. So we'll do, like, not the full word, say, DEV network. Um, so we'll just make that, because uh, we already have a um, 192.168. Dot. Because we already have dot one and dot two, so I'll make that the dot three network. So that be that dot three dot zero. Um, so there we have a dev network, and we have have a land network is uh, one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero, and DMC network is uh, one nine two dot one six eight dot two dot zero. Um. So now I'm gonna well. First thing you need to do is you need to download um, 
the uh, OPM sense. So you can do this from OPM sense. Dot org oh, this is the wrong network here we go opnsense.org um, so go download and so here you can see there's a uh, different architecture types the only one th uh, that's available is AMD 64 whereas pfsense had both uh, available for 32-bit and 64-bit systems and for uh, ARM embedded systems. This one just has uh, AMD 64 systems. Uh, there's also select the image type. Uh, there's Nano, DVD, VGA, and Serial, so just do DVD. Um, and uh, there's different mirror locations. Um, so just do download. Um, I think this goes in ISO, so we'll do, uh, OP and Sense. And let's save. Uh, so, well, I'll resume this video when it finishes downloading. Well, now uh, OPN Sense has finished downloading. So we have a checksum. The file is here. Um, we should use the checksum utility to confirm that this is a valid download. So I'm going to do that. So let's do the file explorer. And um, there we go. Um, is uh, in downloads. Um, okay, let's see. Where is it? Uh, here. So, yeah, the, we need to generate the hash here. This is at uh, ISO OPN Sense. So, I'm going to go there. Sense and I'm gonna open. So yeah, we have some hashes here. So what does it say here? Um, SHA-256 is starts with six, 61, ends with 2D5. So it looks like it's the correct checksum uh, here. Like if you you know valid. A checksum guarantees that the the download finished, and that the download was not corrupted in any way. So it's we're good to go here. So next, we need to. Oh, did I? I think I did. I start a virtual box today. Yeah, need to get virtual box going here. So yeah, I need to, s to start OPN Sense demo here. So I'm gonna do do a new configuration on my virtual machine. So I'm gonna call it OPN Sense demo number one. Um, if I should get get another uh, machine folder. Is there one for VMs? Yes, there is. Um, the type is BSD. And it's free BSD 64 bit. So I'll click on next. Um, memory size. So what were the recommended memory sizes? It, uh, Minimum is what is 
Um, RAM is two gigabytes. Reasonable is four gigabytes. Recommend is eight gigabytes. So I'm gonna go with that. Eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, recommended size of the hard disk is sixteen gigabytes. What what are what is uh, recommended here? Um, well, minimum of four gigabytes. Reasonable is 40 gigabytes uh, solid-state drive. Uh, recommended is 120 gigabytes solid-state drive. Um, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with this. Uh, the, I'm going to assume that like four times the minimum is, is probably reasonable enough. So I'm going to create this. Um, please use the type of you'd like to use for a new virtual machine. It's going to be VHD. And click Next. And for a dynamic allocator fixed size, I'm going to go with fixed size. Um, and yeah, this is the it was going to be created in the, on the V drive, which should give us enough room here. So I'm going to click on create and see if it works here. Uh, this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause the video. So when we come back, we should have a completed virtual. A virtual hard disk drive. Okay, is is has completed the creating the virtual hard disk drive. Um, one more thing we have to do is uh, I need to uh, unzip um, unzip this file. So it's going to extract to uh, directory here. We'll we'll have the full ISO. It's taking a while for this to happen. So, uh, I'll go back to um, Oracle VirtualBox here. Actually, did I start twice? So, let's see, I'm going to do, uh, we're going to go to settings here. Um, this is OPN Sense Demo 1. Uh, type is BSD, version is free BSD 64 bit. I don't see anything wrong with that. Advanced seems right. Um, system floppy opt optical and, and hard disk um, seems okay. Display seems okay. Storage. Um, Seems okay. So network, we have to do something here. So we have a uh, one network adapter enabled here, with, attached to NAT, but uh, we need to do NAT network, and the name of the network is um. Guess uh, uh, what is Net Network one? Let me just go back and check. Um. Oh here, yeah, Net Network. Uh, this is, probably should be renamed here. And it's we'll do. We'll call it WAN Network. Click on OK. So we'll go back to settings and go back to network. Um, go to net network. Um, and this network adapter one is going to be net network with the net network. We also have to enable like two additional network adapters. So we enable the adapter two, net network, and we're going to make this the LAN network. We also need to enable a third uh, network adapter. I'm going to call this NAT network and DMZ network. So, looks okay. Um, serial ports. Um, doesn't have the, the serial port enabled, but that, I don't think that's going to be a problem here. Uh, USB is enabled. Shared folders. So, it looks like everything's 
everything is is we're good to go for uh, booting from yeah so I'm gonna do a normal start here so let's see now it says select the startup disk so you know, I'm gonna go to uh, new device here We're gonna to go to uh, uh, ISO, OPN Sense, OPN Sense, uh, and OPN Sense uh, dash twenty four dot point one DV dash DVD dash AMD sixty four dot ISO should be okay. Click on open, um, and I'm gonna select choose. So I'm gonna do start. Uh, and Opium Sense has has booted um, the live CD. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use the installer uh, user username installer password. OPN sense. You're saying he to start the manual interface, so I don't think we need that here. Um, figuring hardware interfaces should work. Uh, this is taking a little bit longer than I expected. Um, so, oh, it's done. It's configuring lag in interfaces of uh, configuring VLAN interfaces, configuring LAN interface done, configuring WAN interface. Uh, hopefully, this will proceed without too much delay. Just taking a little bit longer than I expected. A little bit too long. So uh, I may have to pause the uh, the video here, and uh, yeah, we'll come back when the WAN interface is configured. Wait, no. Yeah, uh, sorry. Apparently, PS OPN sense. So yeah, this is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, the the uh, WAN interface was, was done like just as I paused the video. So let's see, I'm gonna do do like uh, installer. Login installer and password, OPN Sense, and now we have the OPN Sense installer. So, system. So, uh, let's see. The system console driver for OPN Sense defaults to standard U.S. keyboard map. Other key maps can be chosen. Be chosen below. So, there's a variety of different uh, different languages we can use. But uh, as it happens, I think I'm going to go with the default key map. So I'm going to ch choose select. Um, and there's a installation options here. Um, here's a U UFS GPT UEFI hybrid. That's uh, that's what I did on my previous install. So I'm probably going to do that. Um, there's also a Import configuration where you can, uh, if you, you can save a configuration, and load it here. It's password reset, which you can use to recover installation, and you can force reboot to reboot the system. So I'm going to do with, I'm going to go with a uh, UFS GPT uh, UEFI hybrid. 
and uh, querying us for the uh, the disk to install to uh, or just to which to install um, and I'm going to go with a VBox hard disk which uh, has a capacity of 16 gigabytes last chance are you sure that you want to destroy the current contents of the following disks yes um, initial file systems um, so now I know this is going to take a, a long time so uh I'm going to pause the video until this completes. So, oh wait, is it, uh, it's making progress here. It should be close to installing. This is this going to be like a little bit a little bit um longer than it, than it did the previous time because uh um I did I I should I I'm not using the SSD so it's gonna be a little bit slower um, just because of uh, it's, I chose a different hard drive uh, it's up to 90 90 percent uh, progress so I'm contemplating should I uh, pause the video or should I not well I think I'm gonna pause the video here so uh, uh, virtual box has the focus so well wouldn't you know it um, just as I paused it that the uh, installation was complete uh, so it has this, this option here uh, root password change root password so um, the, the it, when you uh, it, install OPN sense as a, a root password of OPN sense, so we probably should change that. So I'm going to do that. Uh, please select a password for the Windows uh, System Management account. So I'm going to do the secret service, secret, uh, super secret password here. Please confirm the password. Super secret password again. What has happened? Oh, here. Uh, complete install, exit, and reboot. So I'm going to do complete install. Um, rebooting in five seconds. Control C to abort. Um, so it should be rebooting now. Um, see, it's. Uh, okay, so it's rebooted. So, uh, let's see. Yes. Starting to boot. Press any key to start the configuration importer. Um, let's see. It's going pretty quickly here. Um. Okay. Press any key to start the manual interface assignment. Um, well, it's pretty close to doing it anyway. Oh. Configuring hardware interfaces. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this this video until um, it completes booting. Yeah. Okay, well, it looks like uh, the OPN sense is booted, but unfortunately, uh, it looks like we're going to have to take this offline now because it says OPN sense is running in live mode for install media. So I had to power this down and del and delete the, the, the installed CD. So I'm going to. Uh, let me do. Go to power off system. So, uh, it should shut down. Uh, 
so yeah, that's it for the for. Uh, all right. Yep, yeah, it's the, yeah, so I had powered it down. Uh, gonna go into uh, settings here. Um, storage. Okay, so the the uh, opening sets. Uh, install uh, me, uh, optical drive is, is still there with the uh, optical media. So I'm gonna delete that. Move a chat attachment. Um, so now I'm going to boot up again. So now we sh it should run the, the, uh, the hard disk installation of OPN Sense, which, uh, I think we'll, we'll do that now. Um, so let's see, it's, uh. We'll configure the WAN interface. This is where we got stuck last time. Um, so, let's see if it starts. It's taking a little bit longer than I expected. Um, and I'm not sure if there's anything that needs to, needs to be done. So, I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause the the uh, video here. Okay, so the, it's it's finished configuring the the uh, WAN interface. So now it's, it has the login prompt. So I'm gonna type in root and the super secret password. And. Let's see, so we have a uh, WAN and, and uh, LAN interface. Oh, wait. It's the wrong interface. I had to do assign interfaces. EM0 is supposed to be the uh, LAN inter WAN interface, and EM1 is supposed to be the LAN interface. So I'm going to assign interfaces here. Do you want to configure lags now? No. Do you want to configure VLANs now? No, even though it's... Interesting that you can do it at this point. Um, enter the WAN interface, EM0. Um, enter the LAN interface, EM1. Enter the optional interface. Well, heck, I'll do EM2. Um, so, do you want to proceed? Yes. Um, configured link. Uh, oh, here we go. So... This looks correct. It has a uh, LAN is when it is a DC 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 four is a ten dot zero dot two dot four, and then LAN is a one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot dot one WAC twenty four. So this looks correct. So now let's let's do one last thing. I'm gonna do a ping host. Um, let's do, uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's... Okay, it seems to be working. Um, DCP isn't working, so I got, I got to configure that also. Set interface IP address. We'll do it for LAN. Um, no. Enter the new LAN IPv4 address. I'm just going to go 192.168.1.1. Um, enter the new LAN IPv4 subnet bit count. 24. Um, so I'm going to press enter. Configure IP... Uh, IPv6 address LAN interface via WAN tracking. No. Uh, configure LAN uh, IPv6 address uh, via DCP6. No. Um, so, yeah, let's do this. FD, I'm going to do FD00 colon 1 colon colon uh, 1 
and I can do wax 64. Uh, no, there's no upstream upstream gateway address. Do you want to e e enable the DHCP server on LAN? Yes. Uh, enter the start address of the IPv4 client address range 192.168.1.10. Enter the, the end address is 192.168.1.100. Um, no. Do you want to change the web GUI protocol from HTTPS to HTTP? No. Um, do you want to generate a new cell sign in web GUI uh, certificate? No. Restore web GUI access defaults? No. Um, so I think now we can we can uh, run Linux Mint and uh, uh, it should get uh, a DHCP address from the DHCP server. Let's do a normal start. Um, uh, oh, incidentally, uh, um, the settings for the Linux Mint uh, virtual machine. Uh, general, general so, uh, it's, uh, running, uh, this is a variant of Ubuntu 64-bit. Um, it has uh, f 4 megs of RAM. Uh, normal settings for video memory, uh, normal settings for storage. Um, so for the network, we have, uh, is attached to the NAT network and running the, the LAN network. So, it should work. So... Uh, so yeah, Linux Mint is booting. Um, I, I I don't think it it uh it, it gets you like a it just boots you right into Linux Mint. So we'll see if that happens here. Um, actually, there we go. Connection established. Um, so let's just see if this works. And do terminal. Um, let's just lower this a little bit. And I'm going to do IF config. Uh, yeah. Seems to have, be, have been assigned 192.168.1.10 by the DHCP server. So next thing we can do is we can, we can log into the web GUI of OPN Sense, um, which we should be able to do here. Oh wait, it's not working. Why is that? Um, let's just try uh, one thing here. Um, assign interfaces. No, no. Uh, EM0. EM1. EM2. Yes. Um, potential uh, security risk ahead. Um, this is because it has an invalid uh, security certificate, but uh, that's okay because uh, we I know this is basically the OPN Sense router, so we'll do this. Accept the risk and continue. So we have our own OPN Sense uh, login page. So we'll do um, OPNs with roots and uh, what are we doing? Um, super secret password here. And we've... Uh, one moment while we start the uh, configuration. So, let's do... Uh, this, this is similar to the, the PFSense uh, setup wizard. Um, this wizard will guide you through the initial system configuration, which 
Uh, it's mostly redundant because we did this and when we we uh, configured uh, OPN sense at the command line. Do next. Um, so see, host name is OP, OPN sense. Domain is local domain. Language is English. Primary DNS server. Well, I don't know. We could do the Cloudflare, Cloudflare DNS server. And for the secondary DNS server, we'll, we'll do the Google DNS server to 8.8.8.8. Um, allow DNS server to override by DHCP PPP on WAN. Uh, I don't see any reason to not do that. Um, so enable resolver. So do next. Oh, language is English, of course. Um, so let's see. Time server host name is 0.opnsensepool.ntp.org.1.opnsense. I don't know what this is. Uh, so yes, yeah, different different uh, time servers. So I'm just gonna the time zone. Is we need to change that because. Um, Oh, we need to change to America, New York. I'm in the Eastern time zone here. So this looks okay, and this looks okay. So click on next. Um, so IPv4, so when, uh, configure when interface. In most cases, this should be DHCP um, because it's, uh, you, your ISP is using DHCP to 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 give you IP addresses, um, so that should not not be, uh, not be changed. So there's MAC address. Well, we'll keep it blank, but you can also uh, enter a different MAC address to spoof the MAC address. Um, MTU. Um, so uh, set the MTU the WAN interface. Well, Default is 1500 bytes, so we'll keep that the same. Um, maximum server size, what is it, like six some, 600 something? Uh, yeah, check that. Um, here we go. What is the uh, maximum server size? Uh, 1500 bytes. Oh, no, no. Maximum se segment size for IPv4 is 536. For IPv6 is 1220. Let's keep this the same. In fact, I think all these uh, should remain the same, so I'm going to click on Oh, there's a block R RC uh, 1918 private networks. Um, so basically, this prevents uh, private addresses from leaking out onto the internet, um, which uh, should... It, the only circumstance under which you should, you should uh, disable this is if you have a... Um, a if you if your firewall is behind another firewall um also if your if your uh isp hands out private network private ip addresses which is not the case here um block bogon networks block block non-internet routed networks from entering when uh this should be enabled too so i'm gonna click on next um Oh, log me out here. Okay, well now it's uh, now it's at the dashboard. So you see, there's different different uh, options here for uh, this is different uh, information here with widgets, the system information, um, services. Um, so it's config D, cron, DCPD, because uh, we configure the DCP server, login, NT, network time daemon, 
uh, packet filter, system routing, system, system tunables, syslog in next next generation, unbound and web GUI, um, and it's gateways here. We, we haven't really configured the gateway, but we'll, uh, we may configure this in a, in a, a different video. Um, there's interfaces, LAN, Opt1, and WAN. So overall, my impression just from running uh, OPN Sense for a few days is that it's not the interface is not as 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 uh, slick as PF Sense, and uh, it doesn't have as many options as PF Sense, but uh, it's supposedly more like apparently like. They're getting concerned that once uh, PF Sense got taken over by corporate uh, um, people, there's a, a conflict between the uh, hackers and the corporate guys. So apparently, like, uh, OPN Sense is open source. PF Sense it, lo it looks is trying to become like closed source. Uh, just just my impression of things. So yeah, um, you know. But basically, uh, OPN Sense is is just as good at, or better than PF Sense uh, from the standpoint of performance. So uh, we'll see if that continues to be the case. Um, so anyway, that's the, it for this video, um, and I'll see you in the next video.